Before I start to uh, clean this up, it's interesting to note the contrast between the finish of the metal and the paintwork that's hidden, been hidden behind the uh, legend strip here. Uh, to compare that with sort of the dirt and grime of, of 50 plus years that's on the rest of the metalwork. And it was interesting to hear also about the uh, fact that the uh, mechanical construction of these monitors was undertaken by uh, a third party company and a part of the quality control involved checking that the paint was stuck to the panels by uh, trying to pull it off with masking tape and if it didn't uh, come off I guess that was uh, that passed the quality control. So uh, next job is clean this up. Well the other interesting thing was that the on-air light ha was actually okay for this monitor but it is a 28 volt type as specified in the, in the um, in the manual. So um, the ones that Brian sent me may have come off something else or maybe it was a, uh, a customer choice when buying the monitor as to what voltage bulb was used for the cue light. I won't throw away the blown um, mains light because um, I guess the, you know where would you get another one of these? Um, I guess what we could do is carefully try and get to the inner part of the uh, failed bulb and perhaps put an LED in or something like that a white LED, um, should there come a point when no more of these are obtainable. Right, uh, so a couple more jobs done on the monitor. We fitted the new knob in place and um, I managed to find another original fan for the monitor so that's now fitted in place of the more modern version. And finally, uh, we don't want to see any more test patterns on the monitor do we? It was made to show real pictures so, well, there's just the wall of the garden, and that's being produced by this Link 109A camera. Just the sort of camera that may have produced pictures for this monitor when it was in service. So this monitor's now been running for about an hour without... Uh, any difficulty or um, distress, which is uh, going to be a bit of a record. Um, but I suppose the real moment of truth comes when we look at the second monitor, which has not been powered on for about eight months, probably. And uh, I really haven't tried this, so there is only one thing to do, and this is sort of live television, I guess. We'll see what happens. Well, we've got a raster. Ah, we've got a picture. Dirty switch. Oh dear, about a heart-stopping moment. Um, clearly, we don't have the width quite right and the height seems excessive, but that might just be an adjustment. So, uh, assuming this lasts more than about five seconds, uh, I'm actually really quite pleased. Um, let's see what we can do about those uh, picture settings. And we'll just turn up the width a little bit. Still a couple of jobs to do on the first monitor. Clearly the mains on indicator has failed, but we can put a spare one of those in, which shouldn't be too big a job. And also probably um, some small tweaks to the internal presets, just so that the brightness and contrast knobs match on the two monitors, so that they give approximately equal picture characteristics with the knobs in the same posi same positions. That was a, um, a be nice to, to achieve that. Just at the moment, to give the same sort of picture, the knobs are actually in quite significantly different positions. 
Other than that, though, I think it's time for a cup of tea. Well, there's a quick look at the type of bulb I've managed to find, 5 volt, 60 milliamps. That's very close to the specification of the lamp that's failed and the resistor, so I think we'll give those a try. And that's actually what they look like. It's a tiny little bulb. If we compare it with the one that's failed, there is quite a difference. But we'll give this a go and see if we can get a, a reasonable match to the original specifications of the resistor with this bulb in place. So here we have the photo resistive part of the resistor connected up to the multimeter and we can see that with ambient light we've got a few K of resistance. If I then cover it up we can see that the resistance climbs to several hundred K. And with the light bulb held close to it we can get down into the hundreds of ohms. Not sure if you can make that out but the components they sit in little pockets within this gel material in there and I haven't disturbed it too much so I might actually be able to get them to sit in their original positions. So then we have the light bulb soldered back onto the base and uh, that's running with uh, 5 volts applied and we're getting around about 250 ohms which is within the specification and we can actually get the the original cap to fit on now and it makes a small difference to the resistance probably because the light is reflecting right so here we have the resistor reassembled and i think we can now put that into the monitor and see how we get on So there we have both monitors working. With the resistor replaced, we've got the contrast control in a reasonable position. Um, I haven't been able to get them to match exactly, um, but there is a limit how much uh, time I'm going to spend on these monitors, really. And we now have them in a working condition, and that's the, the most important thing. Uh, they're cleaned, ready to go, and uh, I think the next step is to get them loaded in the car. I'm going to switch them off quick before something else blows up. <laughs> 